What's good family? So mash the like button, subscribe and lick off the bell. Wow. So obviously your man know I be just finished watching. Yeah. I'm in the UK and I fell asleep and I thought that the fight would start at 5am. But 2 twos it started at 4am so I ended up missing it. I had to wait a long minute for the exclusive leaked high quality copy to come out. But anyway I've watched it now. And I've got to say that Plant Pot, I actually thought he was going to make to the end. Because, I don't know what, obviously a shot caught him, but he was doing he was doing alright, as in he was surviving. So in a way, I think, I mean, even in the post-fight, he said that he felt he wanted to carry on. And in fact, to be honest, yeah, I mean, was Plant going to win? No. Was Plant going to make it to the end of the fight? No. But I do think that the ref should have given him a count, personally. One more count. I think he deserved one more count. Because I guess you could say, oh, YB, you want to see blood and rock em, sock em. But listen, end of the day... Man got paid ten million dollars, yeah, and that's what the fans. You know what I'm saying? What, what a fan? What, what are we paying for? We paying for? If you know what I'm saying? If if, if, if it, it's a fight about watching a true conclusion, or is it about? I don't know. Some, something else goofy, goofy, yeah. Now don't get me wrong. At smaller fights where there's not as much on the line, both fighters aren't getting paid as much. Fair enough. If you want to say that, listen, there's no way Plant can win, so we're going to stop it now. Fair enough. But in that kind of fight, Plant eat. He would have got up, I reckon. And therefore, he would have gone spark out the next time. And rightfully so, yeah? That's the game we're in. Because Plant himself even said, I wanted to carry on. So what? These referees, man, too twitchy. Yeah? Let the guy have no more left. That's my opinion. But anyway, I'm sure that'll be somewhat controversial. I mean, he, again, he was never going to win. But if you watch it carefully, yes, he had jelly legs. But I'm pretty sure Caleb Plant, he hasn't been rocked before and I think that's what was happening it was his first time trying to fit, work out them new jelly legs yeah and that's why he, he got when he got put down the first time he kind of stumbled across the ring so he was trying to get his balance right again he weren't going to do nothing but he was ready to go spark out and rightfully so yeah that's what you get paid 10 million dollars for because guess what I tell you what in fact I know 99.9% .9 of people would go I'd, I'd go listen pay me 10 million Give me a hundred grand. I've got, do you know what I'm saying? If someone said to me, YB, I've got a hundred grand and you're going to get knocked spark out, I'll take that right now. Never mind ten million. So don't give me that rubbish about, ah, oh, you know, the fighter's health. The fighter got plenty of health. He got ten million dollars worth of health. But anyway, that's just me nitpicking. Let's take the fight from the, well, let's take the analysis from the jump. The early rounds. The early rounds, it became apparent very quickly that Plant, much like most fighters, these fighters, I hate to say it, but these fighters have very poor punch technique. They slap. They don't turn their shots over. They don't dig. They're all pushing, pushing their shots. And that's what's happened here, I'm afraid. Callum Smith. All of them. Watch the difference in the technique quality between Alvarez and all these other men. They, they push their punches. It's all tip, tap, tap, tappy, tap, tap. Obviously, again, it's easier said than done. But there's, there's really very few fighters who do dig. Think about Mike Tyson, Alvarez. It's few and far between. I don't know what these trainers are doing, but if I was training any athlete, you've got to learn to dig. Um, but anyway, like I said, taking back to the early rounds, <sighs> Plant's... I don't know what it is, because even after the fight, Alvarez's face had nothing on it. Plant was throwing shots, but clearly there weren't even a scratch on Alvarez's face. I guarantee you, in fact, look at the post-fight press conference. You wouldn't even know he's in a fight. It's madness. But then again, people were alleging, or some of the interview, or some of the commentators were alleging, oh, maybe Plant Pot hurt his hand, his right hand, but that wasn't the case. The reason Plant wasn't throwing his right hand as much was because anyone who's boxed knows that, myself included, when you're being shut down, when you're being hit with hard shots, when you're scared to throw, guess what? Guess what the first thing to go is? The first thing to go is your backhand. Why? Because when you throw your backhand, it opens you up the most. Yeah? I mean, there's even examples of fighters. There's obviously levels to being shut down. The ultimate you've been shut down is when you turn into a fighter like Adrian Broner, who don't throw no hands. He just always got his guard. In fact, a great example of a fighter who shelled up. Watch Usyk versus Gassiev. Gassiev was shut down, and all he did the whole night was to stand there with his guard up. That's when you've been completely shut down. Now, to be to be fair to Plant, he wasn't completely overwhelmed, because he still had the jab going, but the reason the right hand wasn't throwing 
was because he was overwhelmed to some extent. He only really threw it as a, it was quite, almost like a, a counter right hand. And even then, he wasn't committing with it. And I think that's a key kind of, the reason Golovkin, and that's to be fair, the reason Golovkin was relatively so successful was because, what do we know about Golovkin? Golovkin also can dig. Yeah? And a lot, I hate to say this, but in my opinion, a lot of it's about technique. When you look at Alvarez's technique and Glovkin's, they're both similar. They both know how to turn their shots over. And if, I'm afraid to say, if you are not turning your shots over, this guy's going to cut through you. Yeah? His guard's too tight, got a high guard, and he's coming forward. Bottom line. This tippy-tappy rubbish, it don't, it don't work. At that level, I'm afraid. Tippy-tappy works against other tippy-tappy. Yeah? When you've got guys like... I think that's why Golovkin and Alvarez have been so successful. Now, we what we don't know is, maybe it's more than technique. Maybe you do need the, kind of, the muscular, the fast-twitch muscles around it, which may well be the case. But Plant Pot looked big. He was big in there. He was clearly the bigger man. But then again, so was Kovalev. But even Kovalev, to be honest, here's another one. He does that... Kovalev don't really sit down and turn shots over, does he, and commit. And that's what the story of this fight was. One man, Alvarez, has the technique and the ability to really dig and turn shots over. And the other guy, he was throwing five shots at a time, money, pity patty shots. But look at Alvarez's face. Alvarez had just had an 11-round fight, and Plant Pot had thrown a number of combinations, some of which landed. But there weren't no marks there, because they weren't doing no damage whatsoever. No damage. And that's the bottom line here. If you ain't doing no damage on Alvarez, you ain't got no hope. And unfortunately, that's why... There's no one in the division. Maybe 175, but I'm not even that impressed with them, man, to be honest. I'm really not. The only guy, as I've mentioned before, the only guy who I want to see Alvarez fight now is Andre Ward. That's it. Because Andre Ward's proven he's got the IQ. He'd have the size advantage. He'd have the age disadvantage. But that's how it'd balance out. And I think that Alvarez and Eddie Hearn should just go on a mugging spree right now. Alvarez and Eddie Hearn should just start mugging off Andre Ward. Why not? What's he going to do? Nothing. Yeah? That's what they should be doing if they were smart people. Because there's nothing else around. They're all bums. Charlo, bum. He's a bum. What's he going to do? He ain't going to... He's too small. He's 160. He's too small. Listen, Alvarez, yeah, is turning over 175, 168ers. What do you think? What do you think? Charlo too... too listen, Charlo is too skinny in the back. Simple as that. He ain't going to do nothing. And he knows it. Listen, Charlo knows it as well. That's why he don't... He, listen, Charlo don't mention nothing about Alvarez. That's the last thing he mentions. Yeah? At best, Charlie wants to fight old Golovkin at 50-year-old. Yeah? But anyway, again, let's take it back to the start of the fight. The start of the fight, Plant Pot came out and he was putting his combinations together and you could just tell that it was a matter of time again. But this, unfortunately, this always seems to be the case with Alvarez now. He's got to that level where no one can punch. There ain't no punches in, in the division, is there? Call me a liar. There ain't no punches. There ain't no punches. There ain't no one who's super slick. Plant was alright, but he weren't super slick, was he? He wasn't made with a slick. He wasn't making Alvarez look... I mean, he wasn't making Alvarez look silly, and then... He, he was just another standard, bog-standard dude, to me, in my opinion. Which really... Again, I hate to say this, but it's true. I feel like boxing... Alvarez is really the only Hall of Fame guy around in about four divisions, if that makes sense. The next Hall of Fame guy you have to go to is kind of like maybe Terence Crawford. Isn't it? That's it. Between 147, or 140, 147, and 175, there's like one Hall of Famer. Alvarez and maybe Terence Crawford. It's not, it's just thin. There ain't no one who's, when you think about the old days of James Tony, Roy Jones, even Tarver. Like, imagine what, Tarver would cut through them all, all. like Tarver, you know what I'm saying? The, Roy Jones would just, where are, where's the depth? There ain't no depth, is there? And that's why it's just not as exciting as it should be. We should be seeing... Alvarez versus other Hall of Famers. That's what makes it exciting. That's why the Andre Ward fight. Because I feel like Andre Ward has the quality to make the fight interesting. These guys now, and it's not Alvarez's fault, but it's the truth. The truth is, the fights aren't competitive enough to be super entertaining, if that makes sense. It's all one-way traffic. From the start of that fight, yeah, there wasn't at one point where you thought, oh, this may go the other way. Does that make sense? There wasn't one point where there wasn't one point where I thought, oh, this may be it's gonna go the other way. And that's ultimately what makes the fight interesting. When it's 50-50 and you're not sure which way it's gonna go. When was the last time we saw Alvarez in that kind of fight? 
I guess you could say Golovkin, but even then, now, I feel like Alvarez, he's moved on since then. And, and But even, listen, the third fight wouldn't make no sense because Golovkin's shot a bit, he's too old. But now, even now, yeah, prime for prime, Golovkin versus Alvarez, I think Alvarez, I'm not sure he'd stop him now. It depends how he approached the fight. If Alvarez went in there intending to stop Golovkin, I think he'd probably stop him now. He's got two, he's just two... I think he hits. I think he hits harder than Golovkin. I think he's just he's just too well rounded. Golovkin's a lot more stiffer. He's a lot. Ain't got no head movement, etc., etc. Now, one thing I will praise Plant for was. Well, I mean, what can I say? I mean, towards the end of the fight, he started kind of holding his feet a bit. You know, I think there was a few body shots he put in, but again, he didn't have nothing to offer. He couldn't win. Either he was backing up and getting hunted, or he was trying to hold his feet and getting hunted. And that's the problem. When you, you must have some dig in your shots. Otherwise, you are what we call food. And it's as simple as that. It really ain't rocket science here. If you don't have no sting in your shots, you are going to be food. That's what we now know, and we have known for a little while now. And I wouldn't even mind, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Alvarez versus Floyd. Not now, because obviously Floyd's old, but I just think, I think Floyd, don't get me wrong, I'd never write Floyd off. I'd never say you're going to get knocked out, but what ha Alvarez back in 2013, or 2014, whenever it was, was a complete different fighter. He wouldn't just commit forward. Now, he don't care what the other guy's doing, he's coming forward. He has no regard whatsoever. And you notice, even from the second Golovkin fight, even from the second Golovkin fight, he still came forward. He knows too much, and I feel like Floyd would say things like, oh, well, I must have some power because Alvarez wouldn't walk forward with me. I think that has more to do with his naivety, to be honest. That's, but that said, listen, we're never going to know now. But I just feel like this Alvarez is a different level, and that's why I need to see Andre Ward fight, honestly. That's the only fight I need to see. I need to see Andre Ward come back, have a warm-up fight, and then get this fight on. That's what I need to see. Yeah? Bottom line. To make sure that what I'm saying is correct. Because right now, yes, I can rate Alvarez, but the true ratings come when you do these things. And it's not Alvarez, again, it's not Alvarez's fault. It's not his fault that his division super weak. Because it is weak. You've got Billy Ho Saunders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Plant, give him credit. He's got the heart. He had the heart for sure. But he just don't got no, ain't got the snap, has he? What are you gonna do? No snap. It's a no snap having us, yeah. And he knew it as well. He, 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 there wasn't one point. To, call me a liar. There wasn't one point in the fight where you thought, "Wow, it's gonna." Oh, look, he might. And that for me is not what boxing is about. That's not what sports about. Alvarez is too dominant for me. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind seeing him versus. You sick at cruiserweight? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? It's one, of the, it's one of them ones for me. You might have to go to cruiserweight to get some, to get some, um, to get an interesting fight. Well, certainly 175. But then it's almost a shame because you shouldn't have to fight massive dudes to get some competition. Where are all? The, where's the depth? Or maybe this it's a simple case of Alvarez is just too good. But then again, I think about. Think about the old one, 68 pounders, like Roy Jones in his prime, or all them man. That would be interesting fights, wouldn't it? There's, I just don't, I don't believe Alvarez would cut through a prime Roy Jones. Too tricky, too much speed. If that makes sense. That would be actually a genuinely interesting fight. These days, no one has. For me, to compete with Alvarez, you've either got to have super high IQ or super attributes, like super speed. And or huge punching power. These guys today, they ain't got no IQ really. They all they all just kind of bog down the fight, isn't they? To be honest, you don't you don't look at none of you don't look at none of these guys and think wow, that's special. That would stand the test of time. That's the bottom. Of, that's the bottom line for me. The bottom line is, will, will do your skills stand the test of time? If that makes sense. Could your skills stand up in any era? Would Plant Pot Plant Pot wouldn't be top twenty back in them days, yeah. Nor would Billy Ho be top 20. You know, that's, what I'm, that's the problem here. But anyway, great night from... Great, great, great fight from Alvarez. I just want to see some competition now. Because for me, it's getting a bit... 
it's almost like, it's not Alvarez's fault, but for me it's almost like, once you've seen one Alvarez fight, you've seen them all, haven't you? <laughs> it's, the truth. it's the truth though, isn't it? These days, when you've, if you've watched one Alvarez fight, for example, if you've watched you, um, Alvarez versus Billy Joe Saunders, then you've watched Alvarez versus Caleb Plant, haven't you? That's the truth, isn't it? It was no difference. He went in, or same as Alvarez versus Kovalev. He goes in, his guards up, his chin's down, he's walking forward, he catching shots, he putting big shots together. It's almost like a metronome. We need to see the class. We need to see someone in there who got it. And I'm afraid to say the only guy from... I mean, outside, yeah, Usyk. Andre Ward, but again, Usyk is just too big, probably. It crew, like, heavy. That's just ridiculous. That's just not right, is it? He's fi genuinely 50 pounds heavier. Like, it's, at that point, it's not even about skills, is it? At that point, it gets about just the sheer size. But even then, I wouldn't mind watching it. <laughs> Put it that way. But again, from Alvarez's point of view, why would he expose himself to that thought? That is just ridiculous. Yeah? But you could argue, well, Roy Jones went up and... But then again, Roy Jones went up and thought, who would he fight? John Ruiz. John Ruiz wasn't and that wasn't even a Usyk, I don't think. John Ruiz was like... I don't know how he was world champion, but he wasn't like these kind of guys, was he? He wasn't, a, he wasn't like these kind of heavyweights. So, listen. <sighs> Alvarez is a phenom. I'm just frustrated that we have such a phenom, but there's only one of them. Yeah? And, that's, and that for me is a shame. Because I want to see phenom versus phenom. I want to see special versus special. And the way boxing's going now, I mean, it's even... Think about when think about when Alvarez goes. When Alvarez goes, what have we got left there? He's shocking. There's no depth, is there? There's no depth. There's no quality. They're all just average dudes, truth be known. I mean, people are talking about Benavidez. Benavidez will get walked down and be finished even quicker. Because Benavidez ain't even slick. At least people like Plant... Is somewhat slick. Benavides will get chopped through. Easy. He, that'll be one of the easiest fights for Alvarez. Because Benavides, he slaps. He don't dig himself. People say he's heavy handed. Benavides is heavy handed to bums. Yeah? He don't turn these shots over. Benavides is volume. And you can only get volume off against bums. He ain't going to be getting no volume off against Alvarez. He's going to get hit a few times and he's going to shell up. That's what's going to happen. Alvarez, too much power, too much chin, too much. Too much technique, too much guard. He, he, for this generation, he just leagues above. He needs to be. What we need to do is make a time machine and send Alvarez back to the eighties and nineties, back to the nineties. Really, that's that's when we'll see what what's really good. Because if Alvarez went through there and chopped up Roy Jones, then we know that he's probably the greatest of all time. But with this, I'm, uh, with this current crop, I, you can't say I, you can't say the greatest of all time. And it's a shame because I think he he may well be. You know what I'm saying? He may well be. Good enough to say that, if that makes sense. But you just can't say it, can you? You just don't know. And that's why, if Alvarez chopped up Andre Ward at 175, then I'd, I'd probably say, you know what, this guy, if not top one, he top two all time. That's the fight we must happen now. So, Eddie Hearn, Team Alvarez, get on it. I don't get what you what you beat around the bush for. We don't want to see Charlo or any bums. We want to see Alvarez versus Ward. That's it. Yeah, so get, if I was them, if, if I was managing Alvarez, right now, in that post-fight interview, I'd have said, listen, because don't forget people, Plant, the build-up was perfect for it, because uh, Andre Ward was gassing Plant up. I'd say, listen, uh, uh, listen, Andre Ward, I'd have smoked your mans, what are you going to do now? Yeah, are you going to keep hiding in retirement, or are you going to come out and get this work? That's what you should be doing, yeah? Right now, all we should have heard in a post-fight is taunting Andre Ward, Andre, you big scary retiree, Andre, you big old retiree looking ass, yeah, I want your bad. Yeah, listen, listen. <laughs> Andre. Yeah, I'm gonna drag your old ass out of retirement and come give you these hands. That's what you—that's what you should've been saying, hundred percent. Yeah, that's all the fans want to hear after the fight. We don't want to hear about nothing else. That's it. We want to hear you want Ward. And if Ward don't want it, so be it. If Ward is scary, then so be it. But at least then you know you—you you know you've tried, kind of thing. I just don't think. And I guess Alvarez's character isn't that way inclined, but I'm just telling you what the fans want. I'm speaking for the fans. And any honest fan wants to see Alvarez tested. And it's a shame that we need a retired man to test him, but it's the truth. That's what it is, I'm afraid. That's what it is. That's the facts. The facts are, the only guy who, who has any kind of quality is Andre Ward, and he's retired. That's it. Anyone who tells you anything different is lying to themselves. And it's a shame. I'd love to, honestly, yeah, I'd love to be able to sit here and tell you, man, that, oh, but we've got this guy coming, and he's really the one who's going to test him. There ain't no one. It's Andre Ward or Bust for me. 
But from Alvarez's point of view, he's probably thinking, well, I'm making 40 million a pop. Just washing these bums out. But I know that Alvarez loves the test. So, get on it. Yeah? We want Ward. I'm, I'm, listen, I, I can't lie to you. I'd back, I'd back Alvarez to win that fight. But, I want to see it. Do you understand? No doubt.